Welcome to Pipe Music with Decimals. In this lesson I'm learning to add and subtract with decimals. Well let's start by having a look at tenths and hundredths. Well over here you can see I've got one long rod. This one long rod represents one hole. And underneath that you can see that I've got a number of smaller uh, squares. Now these squares down here are called tenths. And you can see that it takes ten of these tenths to make one whole. Another way to call these is to write them as a fraction. They look like that. One tenth. Now it's really important to remember that we're not talking about tens. Tens would be much bigger than this one whole rod. In fact, there'd be ten squares wide and ten squares high. There'd be a really, really big square. But we're just talking about uh, much, much smaller squares. And these are tenths. Now let's have a look at hundredths. And again, look at the end of this word. It's got that th sound. So you know that we're talking about uh, small numbers, not much, much smaller than hundreds. Well up here we saw that ten tenths make a whole, so it makes sense that it takes one hundred hundredths to make one whole. And we can write that like this. One one hundredth. Let's have a look at what these look like. If I took one of these tenths and I'm going to pretend I'm putting it under a magnifying glass. So let's take this one from down here and I'm blowing it up so it's going to be easier to see. Okay. Now a hundredth is the same as one of these tenths cut into ten pieces. One, two, three, four, there we go. So now it's been split into ten pieces. Now remember they look big here because I've blown up one of these tenths like it was under a magnifying glass so that I could see it. But these are actually teeny tiny. If I was to draw a hundredth up here next to one of these tenths, it would probably be about that size. So it takes ten hundredths to make one tenth and a hundred hundredths to make one whole. Now let's have a look at some addition and subtraction questions uh, using tenths and hundredths. Let's start with this question here. Uh, in the morning I eat 2.7 chocolate bars and in the afternoon <coughs> I eat another 1.9 chocolate bars. I want to work out how many chocolate bars have I eaten in total. Well over here you can see I've got my 2.7 and if I go down a little bit you can see I've got my 1.9. Now since it's an addition question, I'm going to be uh, combining these two groups. So let's start by moving uh, some of these tenths up here. So I'm moving some tenths up here to see if I can make another whole chocolate bar. You can see by moving those tenths up, I've now got another whole chocolate bar. Just so I've got all the tenths together, I'm going to move these ones up here as well. So now it's easy to work out how much we've got. We've got a whole chocolate bar here, we've got another whole chocolate bar there, so that's two whole chocolate bars. We made another one by putting all the tenths together, that's my third whole chocolate bar. I can see another one down there, so that's four whole chocolate bars. So I'll write that there, and we've got some tenths left over. One, two, three, four, five, six tenths, so the six goes in the tenths column. So 2.7 plus 1.9 equals 4.6. Let's have just have a look at a couple of ways we could have worked out this question without using the materials. Uh, so we've got 2.7 plus 1.9. Well, I know from my um, earlier addition lessons that I'm good using a number line, so let's try a method like that. I'm going to put 2.7 down here. Now often when we've been using number lines we've jumped up a tidy number, but instead of jumping up a tidy number, let's try and jump up by a whole number. Well, I can see that 1.9, I know that 1.9 is very close to 2, so I'm going to try jumping up by 2. Plus 2. 
Now 2.7 plus 2 equals 4.7. But, of course, I only had 1.9, so jumping up 2 was a little bit much. So what I have to do is fix that mistake by taking off that 0 0.1, or 1 tenth, that I added. 4.7 minus 0 0.1 is 4.6. And you can see that's the same answer we got when we used the materials. Let's try another method. Same question, 2.7 plus 1.9. And I'm going to use another method that we used in our addition and subtraction lessons. I'm imagining these two amounts in my head, and I'm wanting to move 1.9 up to 2. So what I could do is I could take away 1 tenth from this pile, and I could add that tenth to this pile over here. If I do that, that means 1.9 becomes 2.0, or just 2. And because I'm taking that tenth away from this side, 2.7 minus 0 0.1 becomes 2.6. And again, I've got a really easy question to answer now. 2.6 plus 2 equals 4.6. Now we're running out of time a little bit for this lesson, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another lesson where we do a few more addition uh, examples and we'll also have a look at some subtraction questions as well. You can, you can find that second part of the lesson at teachertools.co.nz.